Hello, and welcome to episode 19 of TBR, the To Be Read podcast. My name is Patrick Stemp, and I'm joined by my co-hosts Jamie Maltman and Michael Laron. And tonight we have a guest, Mr. Kevin Tumlinson. How's everyone doing? Great. How's it going, guys? I'm good. Good. good I think we'll uh, start off by offering uh, congratulations to Michael for his uh, the new addition to his family. Thank and you very much. If Congratulations, he looks t- Michael. Yeah, if he looks tired tonight, that's why. Oh, yeah, you can see it under my eyes probably from the podcast. But, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry for leaving you guys hanging last week. Uh, it kind of came up suddenly, so. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> All's good. How and, dare uh, you? Baby's, yeah, <laughs> all's good and baby's healthy, so, <laughs> so we're both happy. Awesome. Big sigh yeah. relief there, right? Oh, yeah. What so, are all uh, the hot What's that? You gotta, you gotta, for the female listeners, you gotta say like weight and length and all that stuff. It's like uh, okay. law. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Her name's Isabella. Um, born Dude. six pounds nine ounces and uh, twenty inches long. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So, not a not a tiny baby, but but not a huge baby either. So, works for me. You wouldn't throw it back, is what you're saying. No, no, I don't <laughs> think so. It's got not the usual. It's got the usual twelve fingers and twelve toes. That healthy. <laughs> yeah, and six noses. You know that sort of thing. <laughs> That's good. Um, so as usual, we uh, start off the show by talking about what we've been reading uh, for the past week. So um, Kevin is our guest. Would you like to go first? Sure, I'll go first. I uh, I had to narrow it down, like I was mentioning earlier. I I, uh, I tend to cycle through a lot of books at one time, but I picked the three that I I am uh, enjoying most at the moment. And uh, the first is uh, Pines by Blake Crouch, which is, uh, and I'm and I'm reading everything through uh, Kindle Unlimited right now, by the way, which I know some some of us can't uh, access, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pines is interesting, and there's actually a, I think there's like a Fox show that's being developed around it, but it's sort of a yep. um, sci-fi mystery kind of thing. It's very, it's uh, feels a little bit like Lost through a big chunk of it. Um, so I'm, and I've purposely been avoiding reading anything about it because I, I don't want to know what it's about. I want to discover it. So it's been a lot of fun. But is that the first book you're reading? reading the, Wayward Pine. Uh, yeah, the first it's the fir- yes, it's the first in the Wayward Pines trilogy. So I'm reading Pines, okay. which is book one. Yeah, right. So and, I've read uh, book one. I haven't read the other two yet, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the TV show as well. Yeah, and I had no idea there was going to be a TV show when I first started reading the book. I just noticed the logo on the cover uh, recently. So <laughs> the Fox logo. Um, and I'm reading uh, the Atlantis Gene, which is. Uh, um, A.G. Riddle. And actually, the funny thing is I started reading that because uh, my my writing partner, Nick Thacker, was asked to do a uh, uh, write something for the Kindle Worlds uh, connected to this book. So uh, I figured I'd better get on it and read read at least to the first book in the series before he's got something out. So <clears throat> so that's that one's a lot of fun, too, actually. I'm enjoying that one quite a bit. That's... that's um, uh, it's a little different than I expected it to be, and because uh, you know, I don't typically go in for the, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, so I don't know how much detail I can give away without without spoiling anything. But there's a lot of intrigue in it. There's a lot of uh, sort of these clandestine operations and uh, uh, these secret government groups and everything. So it's a lot of fun to read, actually. <laughs> Good, and I th- I think you had a third. I did have a third, and on my nonfiction pile, I'm, I'm, I recently interviewed uh, Mary, Marianne Cantwell, who wrote "Be a Free Range Human." So I figured I'd better reread her book. So that's on my uh, pile. I did an interview with her on my podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago. So that's in the, you know for the budding authors in the in the audience, that's actually a really good uh, like starter kit for creating your own business and and getting out and you know being on your own and developing that lifestyle. So highly recommend. I read it once before, but this is actually a really interesting read. Hmm. And what was the author's name again? I think you cut out a little bit when you were saying. Marianne Cantwell, and okay. she is uh, she's a lot of fun to talk to, by the way, because she's Australian and living in London, and uh, so she's got and she's very attractive, which doesn't hurt, <laughs> but she's got a uh, an accent that will mesmerize you. I had to kick myself a couple times to get back into the groove of the, of the podcast. <laughs> uh, well, as long as you had fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just noticed your lower third, by the way. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. You're a free range human, right? <laughs> I am a free range human. Uh, we're you know, we're all doing that. You're just the only one who would admit it. That, yeah, yeah right. right. Yeah, you won't see me standing anytime soon. <laughs> or you, or if you pay enough, you will. Enough yeah, cash. I don't have any change. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let, let's keep this uh, E-rated here. <laughs> All right. Yes. Family show. Says yeah. the new dad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Speaking of, uh, how's your week then, Michael? It's been pretty good. I actually got a lot of a lot of reading done these last couple of weeks because um, I wasn't really working on too much writing because. It's kind of more focused on just making sure, you know, with the pregnancy and all that, and it's kind of really hard to think um, writing. So I, I got a lot of reading done, especially while you're we at the hospital during the downtime. So I read um, a lot of fiction and nonfiction this, this past week. I read, uh, fiction-wise, uh, um, continued the Fat Vampire series by Johnny B. Truant. So I'd already read the first book in the past, but I read book two, which I liked, and I'm about halfway through book three. Um, which I like as well. So, um, just kind of a hilarious take on satire, um, like a satire of vampires. Mm-hmm. It's, it's literally about a fat guy who becomes a vampire. I mean, it, the title it couldn't be more apt. <laughs> and it's pretty funny, and and the characters are are endearing, and I'm definitely definitely enjoying the series so far. Um, on the nonfiction front, I um. Let's see, I read uh, The Long Tale by Chris Anderson. Oh, I love that. Have any of you guys heard of that? Yeah, I love that book. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I, I um, Joanna Penn mentioned it. I was rereading How to Market a Book, and that was one of the resources that she mentioned. It's The Long Tale, mm-hmm. and and basically, I won't go into too much of it, but basically, it's just that we've moved from a culture of hits like bestsellers and blockbusters to a niche culture. So. All the things, the, the reason yeah. self-publishing is thriving, the reason, the reason that you can publish any kind of book you want is because there's always a niche for it. And so that was an interesting read and just interesting to think about how, how I market my own work um, yeah. as a self-published author. Um, and then also nonfiction-wise, I'm reading um, Baby Wise. Have you guys heard of that? It's, um, it's a book here that I got recommended it's to help you um, get your baby to sleep through the night. <laughs> because I need to sleep back. <laughs> but, yeah, so that, that's kind of what I've been reading. I read a lot more, but I won't go into everything else, but my Goodreads profile has kind of been blowing up this past week because I got a lot of books read. A lot of TBR. Uh, my TBR pile went, went down by, like, 5%. Oh, no, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jamie, how about you? I'm, I'm the opposite this week. I was on, for my own reading... One, one book continued. I'd started, I think, just, just before the show last week, I'd started onto Green Star by Simon Canton and Mr. Higgins there, and they've got uh, some, I think I'm up to about episode seven or eight now, so I'm most of the way through that first season and really having a, fun, a lot of fun with that, enjoying it. Um, I'm probably going to have to put it aside for a little bit uh, coming up very soon because I need to do some, uh, I need to write, read a bunch of short stories for a, an anthology that's coming out early next month, so i got to do my once through of them, so that's uh, that's all of a sudden come to the top of the list, and I'll be hitting that tomorrow, and I'll probably talk a bit more about that next week. But So that's been my personal reading, and then the other side is my, my I've been reading a lot to my kids this week, so I just have way more books. Uh, the little guy had been away from books for a bit, and now he's, today I just think I read him like five books this morning um, wow. to start the day. So And then the other guy is really into Magic Treehouse, which I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's basically like... Yeah. Kind of a kid's Doctor Who, really. Like, it's like they have this treehouse yeah. that travels through time and space, and they go and have an adventure and then come back at the end, and I'm like, you know, my, my kid watches Doctor Who with me, so the fact that that <laughs> makes sense, like, I would have been all over that when I was five, so I've been reading So have you moved away from uh, Narnia? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's on the back seat for now, so we, we started onto the line, the Wish, and the Wardrobe, and it's been, it's been sitting on the... We'll, we'll get to that again later, pile for a while now, so... It's been Magic Treehouse nonstop, with some other other stuff filtered in there as well. But uh, but yeah, that's that's my week in reading. Cool. So as usual, I've got like 30 things on the go, but I uh, so I'll just talk about the one that I actually managed to uh, finish reading this week, which was um, The Man Who Folded Himself by David Gerald. Um, oh yeah, that's a great book. Yeah. Um, frankly, it blew my Sorry. mind. It's a, it's a 1973. Um, science fiction book about time travel 
and um, it's it's amazing. Um, it's not a, a hugely long read, but it, and it's very very thorough in its treatment of time travel and all of the things that can go wrong and all of the things that it, it's. Um, the kind of time travel universe where I guess sort of the one thing that's different from maybe typical time travel I think you usually see where if you were to meet yourself um, while you were time traveling usually I think most authors or TV shows treat that as kind of a disaster um, that that can never happen that's not the case here um, you absolutely can meet yourself and become best buds and hang out and have, have adventures and um, the he really gets into sort of the philosophy of time travel and, and how it works and all the wonky things that can go on. Did we just lose Kevin? What happened there? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I uh, so that was a great read. Um, that's a it's uh, you know if you I think I reviewed it and uh, was basically saying like if you think Doctor Who Doctor Who is. Uh, um, timey wimey. It's got nothing on this book. It's uh, it's insane. It's highly recommended. It's a great classic uh, science fiction read. Yeah, I keep hearing about that. I'm gonna have to pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. It was one that was so mentioned. Mean. It was one that was mentioned on the self publishing podcast when they interviewed Risa Walker, I believe. Yeah. Um, and so I picked that up as along with her uh, book Time Bound, which I haven't read yet. But uh, so they were both on my list, and I managed to knock one out, and it was great. Welcome back, Kevin. Can you hear us? Can you hear us okay there, Kevin? You may want to unmute your mic. <laughs> Just have maybe, maybe there's a bit of a lag. Maybe. Let's... Uh, so want to sorry for anyone who's watching or listening, but uh, Kevin just kind of seemed... To be just a second here to work that out. Um, can we get him in the chat? Just gonna chat with him real quick. Oh, Michael, you beat me to it. Yeah. So, um, so we don't lose everybody here while uh, while we're working on getting Kevin back up and running here. Um, our topic of the week uh, is reading about authors. So. Um, when you read a book by a new author or, or maybe even someone you've read before, you know, do you uh, look into them or read, it, read their bios or learn about them sort of before you read a new author, um, while you're reading one of their books, uh, after you're done reading, or do you never ever, um, you know, try to find out more about an author? Um, Mick, so do you want to sort of weigh in first? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, were you talking to me? I was trying to go through the chat. <laughs> no, I was just asking, oh, now we have two Kevins. <laughs> and uh, he's been reading that book, see? He just folded himself. There he is. Exactly. <laughs> Can you hear us? Sorry about that, guys. Okay, cool. That's okay. So I don't know if you uh, heard me, did you hear me sort of give the intro to our topic there, Kevin? I did not. Sorry okay, so... That. Our topic of the week is uh, reading about authors. So do you um, read about an author or try to learn more about them before, during, after uh, you're reading their work, or not at all? You know, it, it kind of... Am I, are, am I queued up? Am I answering Go that? ahead. Just, <laughs> no, by all means, go ahead. Because who knows how long I'll be here. Um, <laughs> so it kind of depends. I have, in the past, I have... Um, if an author really resonates with me, I'll go look that guy up right away. And it really just depends on how much I'm digging the book. Um, I do it much more often with nonfiction authors than fiction authors. So uh, in the case of like Chris Anderson or somebody like that, I, I have a long-standing habit of uh, reading a book, and if it's something I found really useful or I thought I, it resonated with me, I'll immediately go uh, contact the author. Which has led to some great relationships over the years. I actually, uh, uh, a lot of the people I interview on my podcast, I met that way. So, um, and it's very helpful, and you get some free advice that way too. So that's that's not a bad way to go. But I have, um, I've done the same with so certain fiction authors, like Kevin Hearn in particular. He wrote the um, uh, Iron Druid series, which is a really interesting, uh, and I, I think it's supposed, I think it started off as being 
somewhat uh, young adult fantasy, but uh, it, it kind of quickly turned, and it's much more adult-oriented. But uh, uh, I kind of contacted him right away. Now, now he's a little too famous to <laughs> respond to me, but at the time we were emailing back and forth. I did the same thing uh, with Stephen Gould years ago when uh, I read... First I read Jumper, and then I read Wildside, and Wildside mentioned the area where I grew up, and so I immediately had to know if he lived there or if he'd you know, grown up there or something, and so I emailed him, and at the time he wasn't very well known. Of course, now he's the uh, president of the uh, Science Fiction Writers Guild, <laughs> so he's a little less accessible now, but uh, yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't think I... If just a standard author, I mean, if I, I don't know, is there a standard author? Um, if I read somebody and I, uh, and it doesn't really click with me, uh, I've, there are tons of authors I've never bothered to find out more about. So, and in fact, I'm really, really bad about not remembering who wrote the books that I read. <laughs> I'm really bad about it, especially for an author. <laughs> but so I guess the answer is during. It's probably when I contact them. If it, if those if my three choices are before, during, or after, I probably am more prone to contact them uh, while I'm reading and uh, or close to the end of reading a book. Cool. I highly recommend it, by the yeah. way. <laughs> How about you, yeah, Jamie? Or was Michael going to step in? I think Michael was ready to go there. No, Either go way, that's it. fine. Go for it. Okay. Um, it's funny. Like Traditionally, not at all. Um, I, I didn't tend to do that much at all in the past, and uh, it's except you know sort of I don't know if, I don't know where it started. I think it was when I did read on writing, which is a funny one because I've mentioned it on the podcast before. I had never read any Stephen King. Obviously, I'd heard of him, knew lots about him, but I'd never known anything about him until I read that, and mm -hmm. that was sort of the really neat picture into where he came from and what you know, and it actually got me interested to read his non-horror fiction. So. Um, you know that was that was an interesting one there. There have been some. The one place that I think it's happened a few times over the years is if if they wrote a if they someone who I'd liked at some point and then they wrote wrote a book about writing. Um, so with, like the case of on writing, that was sort of my entry point for some of them. Um, I know I read. Uh, I was on a cruise ship actually one time and I was just looking through the library there and I found the book that David and Lee Eddings wrote about their you know their. Belgariad world and stuff like that, or and, and it was it was a bit about the world, but it was also a bit about how they came up with the world, and then a bit about being a writer and a bit about themselves, and so that was just a I remember that was a neat one. It was, it was something I'd read, you know, more than a decade before I actually saw the book about them, though. So that was a, a way after. But I'd say the big thing that's changed these days is with all these writer podcasts or um, you know just different places like that. There's a ton of writers now that I've seen and I've heard and I've listened to and, and that's actually intrigued me about, you know, I hear them talk about what they like to read or what they like to, you know, a little bit about their work and so I started reading their work and so a lot of the guys that we've read, the indies have read recently, it's, I, I, you know, sometimes even met them before I ended up writing it or reading it uh, or not reading it but yeah, before reading their books so it's, that's a really neat different thing now and between that and Twitter, um, being actually able to connect to authors and talk to them a little bit, I have found myself, especially when I got into writing myself, like, like really seeking that out and trying to find out a little bit more. I haven't gone really deep in and tried to, you know, certainly not stalking anyone. Uh, not, not that you were, Kevin, uh, that's not what I mean. <laughs> um, I have contacted authors. It's funny, I just, yeah, maybe that sounded like that. No, well, that's not what I mean at all. I have samples of Stephen Gould's blood, though. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But it is, it is neat how you can have that contact, and especially when people are at a certain level of um, early, you know, early on in their career. Now, some people have managed to stay accessible that way for the for the connecting with them, contacting with them, and and of course, there's just a huge variety of how much people sort of put out there on Twitter and on their website and that sort of thing. But it's I have found that really neat now, whereas before the last few years, I never did that at all. So I don't know if you guys have had any changes like that in the way that you've looked into authors too. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way. I, I guess before before I became a writer, I really tried not to focus on knowing about authors too much unless I actually liked the book. Because what I started finding out is I was reading a lot of literary stuff, and I was just try starting to find out that I just didn't really like a lot of these authors as people. <laughs> so why would I want to read their books? And I don't want to mean, mean to be a, 
know, an orifice about it, but uh, there's just a lot, a lot of that condescending crap, you know, and it's like, I don't want to know that about an author before I read their book, because then I don't want to read it, you know, like, a perfect example would be someone like Jonathan Franzen, you know, if I don't know if you guys know who he is, yeah. but yeah. he was the one that the got invited onto, yeah, he got invited onto Oprah's book club, rejected it, and then came back and accepted it, because he thought that accepting her book award would be cheapening his work, that sort of thing. It's like, there's no way I'm going to read his work now, because that just ruined the experience, you know? And so I, I like to let the work speak for itself, and then if I like the author, yeah. I'll keep reading. That's that's kind of my philosophy. Because sometimes yeah. I just don't want to know. <laughs> I just don't want to know about that author, you know? <laughs> don't, don't, don't look behind the curtain. Yeah. Yeah, there is that, the, definitely that sort of... Um, you know, meeting your heroes sort of thing. Like, so for me, uh, you know, for example, the the book I read this week, right, The the Man Who Folded Himself, I mean, I, I enjoyed it a great deal and immediately after reading it went looking uh, just to find out more about him um, and reread his, you know, Wikipedia entry and stuff like that. And sometimes you'll find out interesting information. I think it was mentioned on, on SPP, but I had forgotten that he was the uh, writer uh, behind The Trouble with Tribbles. Yeah, uh, that classic Star Trek episode. So, um, so it's interesting to learn about some of their background, and um, so, and I think, like Jamie, like you said, that I read about them these days is because you might be able to connect with them um, uh, one on one, and even just to tell them that you enjoyed their work. Um, there is a reason not to, though. Like I said, like you know, meeting your heroes, and you know, the more I read about Orson Scott Card the less I ever want to go back and read Ender's Game again. Right? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, oh Right? Uh, so it's unfortunate, like, that's that's uh, kind of the same reason that I've never truly wanted to meet any of my heroes is because, like you said, if they turn out to be a jerk, it'll it's just going to completely ruin the, the, the book or the music or, or whatever. Um, but in general, I do, you know, I, I'll read a lot about... Uh, um, the authors that I that I read a lot, like John Scalzi and uh, Tim Dorsey, and, and these guys, I like um, learning more. But I think it helps us with our craft too, like on writing, for example. Yeah. Um, just to, to 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 peek behind the curtain, we all, you almost kind of need that. It's funny how for on the, writing for this. Uh, on writing has become the sort of um, it's it's almost like the bible for indie authors now, which I think. Um, I frankly think Stephen King might object to, uh, on principle, because <laughs> I think that he is uh, sort of indoctrinated into the into the publishing system. But it, it's amazing how many people have read that book, and it and it that was the book that inspired them to uh, to get into this. This well, game. and I think it's yeah. because for me, I think it it's because well, a it's extremely well written. Yeah, um, of course, it's Stephen King, but I think it's that whole. Um, overnight success kind of idea like it, it's very interesting to see that you know he didn't just Matt he didn't just become Stephen King right he, he worked he had to work just he was to, literally born Stephen King Patrick. yeah <laughs> this is true <laughs> um, but he had to work really really hard at it right um, it, it's he didn't just become a, a multi-millionaire author you know after one book and and overnight right he had to work just as hard as everybody else and so it's I think that's why we're so interested in it because we're living that the early stages of that ourselves. Yeah. So different though now. I mean the way he got in was miles different than than what we do now. Um, mm -hmm. I wonder how he would have fared today. If there if there's a Stephen King in the world right now, you know, is he uh, feeling dejected or is he feeling like he's struggling, you know, to the point where he might want to give up? I mean, uh it's a very different world now. I don't know if his if his ilk could do it the same way he did before. Or or would he fly with control over his own, you know? He might. Yeah. He that's might that's be the more, uh, yeah. Howie, you know. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it, it's just the idea if you believe that um, if cream rises to the top, you know, yeah. is that those who write good books, will they always find an audience for their work? And yeah. uh, I tend to think the answer is yes. Yeah, I think so. I think he's proven that he's got the drive and the um, desire that he I would be somebody who would keep doing it, right? I don't know, though. There's a component to this now that uh, it's pure marketing that 
um, I'm not certain he would actually be that good at because he's uh, he's very good at uh, being the consummate author. I mean, he 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 knows he he practices the craft. He's all about the craft. Mm -hmm. uh, you, if you read on writing, there's not a single word in there about how to promote and market your work. So uh, I don't think that's going to be top of mind for him. Now that may be because of his upbringing. Maybe if he were starting right now, marketing is such a huge component of what we do now, maybe he would uh, go out and learn that and master that just as he's mastered the craft. Uh, you know, so who can say? But, you know, that I think that it's a it, it's an interesting study. I almost want to write that book, you know, like what if Stephen King <laughs> started right now? Like where would he be? He'd be flipping burgers somewhere, writing in his spare time. Still living in that trailer, right? Be Katie P. Select. Katie would eat a select. Yeah. Stephen, who? Never heard of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, you know. Um, yeah. I was, I was going to say, both, I guess both you, Michael, and Patrick did sort of touch on the sort of backdoor version of that, but that that related question to the overall topic of if you find out that this author is a horrible person and you might have read that book, is that now going to stop you from reading that book? Right? Cause I've Absolutely. Heard, yeah. Well, and one of, the, one of the big ones that came out in sort of the fantasy world recently was the, the Marion Zimmer Bradley. The, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the situation or that, but Mrs. of Avalon, she's written tons of books that people might have read a long time ago, and it was like a, you know, abusing her child, her and her husband whole story that came out earlier this year, and hmm. just, you know, will completely turn your opinion of someone, and there's tons yeah. of people that are like, that was, oh, I've been reading, meeting to read that, people have said they've loved it for years, and now it's like, I will not ever touch that, so that's, I don't want to sit this person, whatever. That's Even a really dead, interesting right? like, question to explore. I think I was talking over you, Jamie, I'm yeah, sorry. go for it, no. I was saying, like, even, even, of... even if they pass away, like, there are people like, I would still never read that kind of thing, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. And that's really interesting in that, um, is the author and the author's work, I mean, can they be separated? Because there are, frankly, uh, most of the literature that you've ever encountered in your life was probably written by somebody you wouldn't want to have uh, an overnight with, right? <laughs> so uh, at what point do you draw that line? Because, I mean, Hemingway, uh, I don't know that I would have wanted to hang out with Hemingway. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that's that's who I was thinking of actually. Yeah. You know, like if you're if you're a feminist, anyways, you're not gonna want to talk to that guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's a. Well, it's a lot more jerk. visible now too, right? I mean, aside from some big news story about an author that's been caught, you know, saying or doing horrible things, like back in the the seventies or eighties when you know again Stephen King was coming up, there really wasn't a lot of opportunity to see him outside of. His, his fiction. I mean, you right. might catch him on a talk show or, or on a news, you know, thing trying to talk about his new book, but um, unless he did something truly horrible, you probably didn't really know anything about him other than what was in the bio in the back of the book, right? These days, with the proliferation of, you know, just the internet and everything, I mean, it's everywhere. You, you almost can't not hear, like, learn things about authors. Yeah. Stephen King did murder Richard Bachman, though. I've got that. I've got that on good authority. Hmm. Do you know where the body's buried? <laughs> In Joe Hill's yeah. backyard. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I think it's interesting. You know, like we talk, we we've been talking a lot about how um, negativity influences our reading habits. You know, but like I think the opposite is also true. You know, you have someone like Seth Godin who yeah. allegedly responds to every email he gets. You know, and it's like most people don't do that. Like, like Kevin, if you were going to email your favorite author today, I mean, I don't know how many, I don't know how many authors you've emailed, but let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you email ten authors. You know, you mm -hmm. read ten great novels that you love. You email those authors. You're probably only going to hear back from one or two of those authors. You know, you know and so like, that's just that's how that's how I would think yeah. anyway. And so I, I emailed saying, Kurt Vonnegut like six months ago, and he hasn't got back to me. I'm a little pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> Jackass. I know, that guy. <laughs> he never writes back. No, so it's, it's all about connections, you know. And yeah, yeah. You can if you can form that connection with a reader, and if you had the personality to where you're accessible, I think yeah. readers like and respect that sort of thing because ultimately we want to buy books from people we trust. Well, 
you know, it's interesting because if you write to Hugh Howie, if you email Hugh Howie, you'll get an email that says that uh, something about robots invading and whatever, and robots are responding to his email. And he'll tell you that he doesn't have time to respond to every email. And then 24 hours later, he'll respond. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's all about expectations. Um, yeah. it's, think, it's also the best written. Like it, it is so him. Oh, yeah. His autoresponder yeah. is so completely him. It's great. I actually, when I got it, when I emailed him when he was coming to Toronto, he, I actually emailed back when I got the autoresponder saying that was an awesome auto. Like I actually enjoyed <laughs> right. reading your autoresponder, which I don't think I've ever said to anyone ever in my life. And then he responded to that in like 20 minutes because he, I guess he just happened to be catching the email while he was traveling. So yeah, there you go. I've got to work on my autoresponder now. Yeah, well, well, you know someone like Stephen King or Hugh Howie. I mean, you, you, I think most readers intuitively understand that he's probably not going to be able to respond to every email he gets. You know, it's it's. Yeah. I, I think it's more like the midlist authors that you find out about and you really like that you want to connect with. I mean, I, yeah. I, I'm not going to fire off an email to Stephen King today. You know, I, I mean, because I know I know it would go into a black hole. I think we should encourage everyone to email Stephen King within the next 12 hours. Yeah. Or, or there's that yeah. my voice. Or there's that feature on Goodreads now where you can uh, ask a question. Yeah, ask a question to your favorite author. That those probably go into a black hole too. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering. That might about be. That. that might be a better option. You might get an email back, but it won't be from Stephen King. <laughs> It'll be from his VA. Right, it might be from Stephen at stephenking.com Stephen, or whatever. Stephen with a V. <laughs> or public relations at stephenking.com. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It was interesting to see when he uh, jumped on Twitter. Is that earlier this year or late last year? I think, like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. he just jumped on and kind of said, hey, I finally have Twitter. And I think within a day he had, you know, a million followers or right. something. Yeah. Yeah. And the dude had nothing to say except, you know, there was, <laughs> there was uh, you know, I think he was parenting Joe a little bit, you know, telling him to keep his pants on on the Internet and whatever. But Yeah. yeah. It's funny. He was on The View last week. Which here in the states, the View, it's like a daytime talk show where, um, like Whoopi Goldberg, Rosie O'Donnell, um, Rosie Perez, they all get together and talk about just hot topics and stuff. And I thought it was kind of weird for Stephen King to be on the View because that's all over the place. Yeah, he he was promoting his new movie. I forget what it's called. Uh, uh, the good the good mar- a good marriage. Yeah, it's about the about the wife that yeah. his husband is a crazy yeah something like that. But yeah, yeah it was it was an interesting interview, but. Yeah, he's kind of popping up all. He's kind of popping up more than he used to be. Seems like. Well, it must be because he has something to advertise to, then, right? Yeah, that too. Yeah. Publishers sending him on the rounds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how they make their money, you know. They gotta get yep. those guys out there and keep them, keep them in the public eye. Same as us. <laughs> I can't get on the statement. view. I don't know why. <laughs> Give it time. You got to email. We'll be over. No, we'll be over. <laughs> yeah. So we're. Uh, I think we're just a little bit past half an hour. Shall we wrap it up? Sure. sure. Um, I was just going to say we've, we've had Kevin on, but we didn't really give him a chance to introduce yep. himself a little bit. Uh, I've gotten to know Kevin a little bit over the past few months, and um, I guess tell us a little bit, Kevin, about what you what you write, um, what. Uh, yeah, what you write, and a little bit about your podcast too, because that's something that you definitely okay. want to know off the top. Uh, yeah, I, well, I have uh, right now. I have uh, uh, four full-length books out, and a handful of novellas out. And uh, I wrote the my first series was the Citadel series, which was a science fiction uh, kind of a. It's hard to categorize that one because it is science fiction, but it, I didn't want to. You know, it wasn't like space opera or anything like that. I never fit in any of the friggin' Kindle categories, by the way. Um, and my most recent stuff has been, um, I started a series, a young adult series, a young, young adult fantasy called so- uh, Sawyer Jackson. And I'm actually polishing up the edit on the second book in that right now. It was supposed to go out for my birthday, and I missed it by se- several days. So, <laughs> um, And then I'm co-authoring with uh, Nick Thacker, who is the... Uh, he's the host of the Self-Publishing Answers podcast, uh, among other things. He also has uh, LiveHack.com. Uh, he and I are co-authoring a book called The Lucid, which is uh, a little more like uh, The Pines uh, and books like that. It's a, a sort of, uh, I think we're billing it as kind of uh, 
Revolutions meets um, Dan Brown, you know, that sort of thing. <laughs> so, so a lot of things didn't work. And I actually just today pressed upload for um, the Citadel Omnibus, so you can get the entire trilogy. That's coming soon. No, and you guys are the, I'm the first time I've mentioned this to anybody, so I'm not outing myself. I'm not. You guys are getting this the exclusive scoop. Cool. Um, and then my my uh, podcast is the Word Slinger podcast, which I try to post something. Every, I don't try. I do. I post something every Friday, and that's generally a sort of an interview podcast where I talk to. Um, the whole focus of the podcast is story, because uh, I didn't want to do yet another like self-publishing podcast, and you know I wanted to get something that was a little more fun uh, and a little uh, a broader topic, so that I could bring in a lot of these people that I know. And uh, the idea is to focus on story and how it impacts our culture and our careers and our and our lives. And uh, it's been a lot of fun doing that because I've I've got such a broad um, group of people to talk to. Uh, I've talked to people who do anime parodies and people who do. Uh, I just talked to someone who did a who did, has a ministry actually, which was really interesting. And I I think I mentioned earlier I talked to um, Marianne Cantwell, who is the uh, uh, who wrote Be a Free Range Human, and uh, these really like fascinating people. So it's it's uh, been a lot of fun to do that. So, so that's that's me in a nutshell. Cool stuff. And, 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 where would people come? Where would people best be able to find you? You can find me. The easiest way to find me right now is at kevintumlinson.com, uh, and I know that's kind of a horse choker of a name, but uh, <laughs> um, and I think if you look at my lower third down there, that's how you spell my name. But if you uh, if you just Google Kevin Tumlinson, you're going to find me because there's only one other Kevin Tumlinson I've I've found, and the the poor guy has no shot at um, at uh, having a presence online. There's just no chance for him at all. <laughs> I think oh, I, last time I Google, last time I sort of did a vanity search on myself, I think I dominated like the first like 150 pages of Google. So uh, <laughs> I've got that that name cornered. All I got to do is get my work associated with it. Good stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, I had a blast. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so we'll uh, wrap it up. We'll just say uh, we are on iTunes uh, um, and all the usual other places. Uh, Jamie, did you want to oh, say something? I was just going to say uh, one, one new feature we're starting to add from last week forward, and we'll put a link in the, uh, in the show notes as well, is uh, the To Be Read podcast will have a Goodreads page where we're going to start putting up the books as we Very read good. them for the three of us. So um, we're going to mark... You know, oh, down the roads, we'll mark some of our favorites as we go along, but... Uh, we're we're playing with it'll probably they'll they'll show up sort of around the date of when we mention them on the show. So just as another way to track it, and we'll have again that link in the uh, in the show notes because I know some people have been asking us. And sometimes even we're asking each other for that book recommendation that we had uh, <laughs> from week to week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you have a minute and you're enjoying the show, uh, you know we'd love it if you had a minute to rate and review the show on iTunes or wherever else you might be uh, grabbing the feed from. Uh, and you can find us at tbrpodcast.com. And we uh, record live on YouTube Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern if you'd like to join us live and uh, drop into the comments at any time. And uh, that's it. So thanks for listening. And thanks again, Kevin. Thank you. And Have we'll talk fun. to you all next week. Happy reading, everyone. See you guys later.